Hi, I'm Dr. Ellen, the Midlife Whisperer, and I hear you and I've got you. Think of me as the one-stop shop for all your midlife needs. I'm a psychologist, registered dietitian, nutritionist, board-certified health and wellness coach, and mindful self-compassion teacher. I'm also an author and podcast host with over 30 years of experience empowering midlife women. Good day, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Dr. Ellen, the Midlife Whisperer. And boy, have we got a great show for you today because we're talking all about how to upgrade your self-image and awaken to wholeness. Because let's face it, if you are at midlife, you might be experiencing a lot of challenges, not quite feeling like yourself, not filled with joy, not having the energy that you're used to and not manifesting a life that you love. So we're going to really help you to have more joy, more love, experience more truth in your life. Today's show is all about transformation. It is challenging at midlife, but it's absolutely essential if you want to upgrade your reality and rock your midlife. On today's show, you'll learn how you can literally craft a new reality so you are happier, healthier, and experience more love and joy. My guest is Susanna Kennedy, creator of Reality Crafting 5.0. I love that name. I can't wait to get into it. Whether you're looking for personal growth, spiritual development, increased self-awareness, enhanced intuition, or just what I'm at, Manifest like crazy, Susanna is going to show you how to use principles of quantum physics, law of attraction, and conscious intention to shift your vibration and create a life you love. It's going to be a magical, empowering show that will help you get your midlife mojo back. So I'm super excited to get into it. I think one of the things that's so exciting in the world these days is that the woo, the manifestation, the law of attraction is starting to really align with the science. We're tapping into quantum physics and realizing that you and all of us are both matter, you're both spiritual, your energy, your matter. And if you're able to change your thoughts, change your emotions, you can truly start to attract what is really in your best interest. And I think at midlife so often, you know, we just, we want to change the outside, right? We might be like, oh, I'll go on a diet or I'll get a divorce and find a new partner or get a different job or I'll travel. And that's kind of like what the midlife crisis is all about. We start to feel just blah and tired and like life has just lost its joy. And so we look to change things outside ourselves and sure we might do those things, but then once we've gone on that trip, we've gone through the divorce, then we're still going, if we haven't changed our personality, we're going to sink back into the new, into the same old reality. I want to share a story with you about um, a woman I was talking to yesterday. If you haven't checked it out on my website, themidlifewhisper.com, I have a link there for a new Rock Your Midlife community. And we were having a coaching session last night. Every month I do two coaching sessions or group sessions. People can show up. And there was a woman named Marina and she was, she came to me, you know, I sort of coach everybody for 10, 15 minutes. And she's like, God, no one told me about this. Like no one told me that midlife was just going to suck. No one said that I would be having these health crises, that I wouldn't have my joy, that I would like lose so much of my purpose and meaning because my kids are gone, that my career just wouldn't feel the same way it once did. Like, why didn't anybody warn me? And what do I do? And she was really stuck in this negativity loop, especially around the health issues she was facing. She was dealing with a, you know, a medical diagnosis and she's just focusing on all the things that could go wrong and the downhill slog and how bad it can get. And I was like, whoa, let's see what you can do to start to shift your mindset. Like, can you find moments throughout your day to have some fun? to have some joy, to just celebrate being alive, to go outside. And I'm in Vermont right now and my flowers are just crazy. My garden is popping. The birds are just singing their pants off and it's gorgeous. It's so beautiful to be alive. So if you're listening and you're really stuck in this rut where you're kind of looking at your future and it just feels like everything's going downhill, I'm here to say, you can shift. And we're really going to focus on that today. I love um, John Cabot Zen's quote, um, you can't stop the waves, 
but you can learn to surf. And, you know, sometimes if you've been out in the ocean, sometimes, you know, you got to go under when that big wave's coming and you're like, there's no way I'm, I'm going to be able to surf this thing. So you go under the ocean. It's nice and calm. Or you can let it hit you in the face again and again, and you're losing breath. And I think that's what midlife can feel like one thing after another. Or you can learn to surf. You can learn how to get on top of that crest and have some fun. And that's what we're going to help you do today. But it really starts with changing your thoughts and changing your emotions because your thoughts are the blueprint for what you're going to create. So you have thoughts of, I'm going to get healthier. And this is what I told um, my client yesterday. I said, well, there's so much you can do. She was struggling with, with diabetes. And I said, you know, I've been a dietitian for 30 years. And I said, there's a lot you can do with your diet, with your movement, with your stress, with your sleep to reverse diabetes. It's not rocket science, it's science, it is work, but it is doable. And I said, well, there's lots you can do to shift your mindset, to see yourself in the future, feeling good, to visualize yourself, playing with the grandkids, going on that bike ride, having fun, feeling amazing. And then that emotional experience of like, how do you want to feel? She was feeling all overwhelmed, kind of depressed. And I said, like, how do you want to feel? And she's like, I want to feel energized and joyful. So what can you do in your life that's going to make you feel energized and joyful? And what can you do in terms of your um, meditation time, you know, that contemplative time where you're visualizing yourself, where you're creating this blueprint because your mind doesn't know the difference between reality where it's really happening and your imagination. And so we're really going to get into that and really talk with you about how you can shift your reality and make this quantum leap so that you have more joy alignment. So if you're waking up to the wholeness of who you are, you got to have a trustworthy guide to help you build a new joyful reality for yourself. And our guide today is Susanna Kennedy. She is here to help you skillfully navigate the unknown and build a new life foundation that is expensive and supports your growth. Over the past 20 years, Susanna has helped literally hundreds of people master change in a positive and graceful way. It doesn't have to be hard, folks. It really is much easier than the alternative. And Susanna is honored to have worked with many private clients, spoken to countless groups, taught thousands of teleclasses, and lived her dream of running a global heart-based, prosperous business while living on the beautiful island paradise of Kauai, Hawaii. Her reality crafting transformation technology initiates a ripple effect that upgrades your self-image, your ability to see through illusions and master your thoughts and emotions. From this new foundation, you can make new conscious, healthy choices. I'll say that again, when you build this foundation, it's like, that's where it starts. You start to make new conscious, healthy choices and take action that is truly in alignment with your highest good and soul purpose. So I am thrilled to welcome you, Susanna, to Rock Your Midlife. Thanks for being here. Uh, aloha, Ellen. Aloha. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be here with you. And I'm to, so excited. Uh, yeah. I love your energy. I can just feel it. And that's the thing. I've, I've been a Rocky, a Reiki master, a Rocky master, a Reiki master for 30 years. And like, you can start to really feel people's energy. And I encourage you to, if you, if you are listening to this, check Susanna out. You can go to her website. Um, again, Susanna, your website is? SusannaKennedy.com. All right, SusannaKennedy.com, because she is just a beautiful woman that you can see this energy. So before we get into how to help folks really to elevate their vibration, to create a new reality, I'm so curious, how did you get into this business? How did you start to become the healer that you are? Uh, well, it started quite a while ago when I was um, 42, and I was starting to question um, what is my sole purpose? I, I was, um, I'd been married for 22 years. I had two, you know, teenage children. My marriage was not going so well. And, um, but my career was going really well. I was, I was in the auto industry as a consultant. I was designing training programs and performance solutions, but I was just, um, you know, I had done the American dream. And it didn't feel fulfilling. It didn't feel satisfying. It was, it was, I was slogging through. It felt like a battle. And um, I kept saying, you know, is this what I was put on this earth to do? 
You know, am I, am I supposed to be here to teach guys how to run a car dealership? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. And so asking that question, the answer came in in, in a shocking way, actually. One Saturday morning, I, this energy woke me up. It was pulsing up my spine. It was intense. It was fiery. It was electric. It was, it's like my spine was undulating and I'm like, oh my God, you know, what is happening to me? And I heard a voice that answered me that said, you are giving birth to yourself. Just breathe. And so I had had two children. I did the Lamaze breath. <laughs> and so I, and it helped, you know, to keep me calm and centered and then it took about an hour and a half for this energy to run through me. And then when it quieted down, I felt like a completely different person. So I had birthed some other higher part of myself into this body. And I could feel the vastness of who I am and the love and the wisdom and the power it was like and and yet at the same time I could see this other part of me who I thought I was so my personality my ego my sense of self and I saw it as a computer program you know, a collection of beliefs about who I am that I was using to, you know, relate to the world, but it was so limited and it was so vastly different from who I could feel myself to be. But I also knew that if I didn't get rid of that programming, <laughs> I was not going to be able to be who I really am and do what I came here to do because this new me was on a mission. I am on a mission from God and I better find out what it is and do it. So my first um, manifestation, I guess you would say, is how do I get rid of this programming? And so I, and that voice that came in to say, you're birthing yourself, it stayed with me. Thank God. It was a guiding voice, it was strong, it was clear, it was like talking to someone on the telephone. And I said, how do I get rid of this <laughs> programming? Plus, you know, my personality changed in an instant. All of my values changed wow. in an instant. And so it was unsettling and I knew I had to somehow get grounded and, and integrate this new me. And so anyway, the guidance uh, sent me to a workshop. And in this workshop, um, it was about integrating your I am presence into your body and, and, and living from that. So that helped me to ground. <clears throat> and the same workshop leader also had a process to, he didn't use these words, but it was deprogramming the subconscious mind. And <clears throat> so I did his sessions and it really worked. So I could see, I could see the programming leaving. I wasn't, you know, all the triggering that used to happen, you know, as somebody pushes your hot button and you go off, all of that was gone. I was able to stay in a place of compassion for myself and for everybody else. Um, things just went smoothly when I cleared that. So it's like, oh, this is very powerful. And so I studied with him and became certified in his process. So um, I started to practice it as a practitioner. And as that was happening, this guidance voice was saying, we need you to take your skills that you developed in the corporate world to design training programs and take the information that we're going to send you and put it into a transformational process. And so using 
his technique as a foundation, what they were saying to me was that there's going to come a time when so many people are going to need this and, and they're going to want this and they're going to want to clear their old self so they can create a new life. They're going to want this and you're not going to have time to do these one-on-one -on -one sessions because the process he had was very dramatic and um, <laughs> cathartic and, you know, we were doing this breath and it would trigger, you know, the trauma that put it there in the first place. And it was just people were all over the place and you had to really be there for them. They said, no, we don't have time for that. We want you to make it so that they can either do it on their own or you could do it with a great big group of people. They were showing me like a stadium full of people <laughs> doing it all at once, that it would be graceful for them. And so I took, um, I took their guidance. And the, one of the things that came through to make it more graceful was the triple flame activation. So, and I have this now in a meditation um, style. And what it does is it uses divine love, divine wisdom, divine power, this synergistic blend, the triple flame, the trifold flame, sometimes it's called. It's not a new frequency. It's been around for a long time. But we, we guide it to clear the chakras and then go through the meridian system. So the, the life force energy comes through your meridian system. It's the Chinese mapped this all out. And when you clear that first, then when I go to do the deprogramming work, which is going to into the hidden places, into the cellular memory, into the chakras, past lives, you know, parallel lives, whatever, it's very comprehensive. But it's, but when you go to find that and start to move it out, it, I found that the energy was moving through these meridian pathways. So to clear them out first, they would go through without any resistance. So we didn't have any, you know, boom, you know, now I'm remembering this trauma and, you know, the, <laughs> the way it used to be with the other you know, uh, program. So the triple flame is, um, makes it all graceful and easy. And so then the emotional mental detox, which I created from that, goes step by step to go into those layers of consciousness, the programming, the beliefs, the limiting beliefs. And we start out with the mail, um, all of the all of the misinformation. If if I want to continue to use this computer metaphor, it's like calling up all the files that have to do with men and male energy and the patriarchy. And even uh, you know, if we grew up with a male concept of God, and even our our own inner male and our mental part. And growing up in this um, paradise or this patriarchal world, even the women have a, a dominant male side or a dominant mental side because we took in this programming. And that is what limits us to our intuition and our creativity and all of the feminine uh, right hemisphere parts of us you know so if you clear out the domination that's even within us that we took on it allows the feminine then to to um, thrive to come through so when I was doing this for myself I had this vision and I had just cleared um, the male and the female and I had this experience. So now by this time, I was divorced and I had moved. And I think it was like the first time I went on a date. And this man showed up who 
was very different from, you know, my husband and any other men. And he was very like, um, he would say to me, well, this is what I planned. So he was doing the mental part. He was doing the male part. How do you feel about that? So even that question put me into my feminine to feel. And I would say, well, I like this. I'm not sure about that. I certainly don't want to do that, <laughs> you know. And then he'd say, okay. And then he would adjust the plan and then present it to me again. How does this feel? And it was like, oh, that feels good. Let's let's do that. And so we, uh, you know, we dated for a very little short time because um, he actually didn't live in the area. And when he left, I had this moment where I could see my inner male and my inner female. And my inner male looked like a big, um, a warrior, he, you know, but he was like battle weary. He was wounded. He was tired, you know, and my inner female was like in a cave she was only six years old. She was rolled up in the fetal position and she looked like she'd been there for centuries. And I was feeling the, the, how I liked the way this man treated me and how it put me into my feminine and how all of that felt. I was, you know, feeling all of that. And so Here's this warrior standing at the mouth of the cave, and he, here the little girl comes out of the cave, and she stands and she looks at this warrior, and he, she can feel, and he's communicating to her that he will protect her. And so right in front of him, she starts to grow up. And she grows up into this beautiful maiden. And, and as she's growing up, she transforms. She's all clean. She's sparkly. She's beautiful. She's got a beautiful dress on. And while that's happening to her, he's like healing from all his wounds. He's getting strong again. And it's like they fall in love with each other and walk away into the sunset, like happy ending. And I'm like, wow, you know, and that happened after I had done these, um, these sessions where I let go of all of my beliefs about how men were, and how I need to be in the world. And, you know, it, it was incredible. So that, that was um, the start of doing these um, the well it validated for me the power of the emotional mental detox that i had just created so <clears throat> i had moved to sedona uh, arizona and so i started doing that for people and it kind of grew and you know one on one but then people you know couples would come and say can you do us together and then i'd have so many people wanting to do it i came okay, and do a group and it just grew from there and so it's now called the emotional mental detox but i it always starts with the triple flame activation and i am so um the power of that is so incredible that I offer that on my website as a free gift. So I would just really be honored if anyone hearing this would go to my website and get the triple flame activation because it's going to um, really propel you to and get you ready for the next step of, of clearing all that old stuff out. Wow, okay. <laughs> that was an incredible story. I was totally mesmerized. And I love your story. I'm going to pick up on a couple of things, but I want to let people know it's Susanna Kennedy. It's S-U-Z-A-N-N-A -N -N -A, Kennedy, K-E-N-N-E-D-Y.com. 
get the triple flame meditation. I'm going to get it myself because it's, I love that we don't have to go through trauma. I mean, we're in this time right now. I mean, Pluto kind of just dipped back into Capricorn. It's going to dip back into Aquarius. And we are in this age of Aquarius. And, you know, as midlife women, we influence up to three generations, up to four generations, our, you know, our, our grandkids, our kids, our peers, our parents, we are so powerful. And so it's so important that we clear away this stuff. And I love that your method doesn't go into trauma. I mean, first I have to say, I love, and I have a qu question too. Did you, when you were going through this huge transformation, did your old personality, your old ego go, no, no, I don't want to go there. It just seems like you were, was there any resistance or do you find that there is resistance in the people you work with where we have these parts of ourselves that don't want to release? We, you know, the trauma is all about when we're, you know, four five, six years old, we develop these parts of ourselves to keep us safe, whether it's a people pleaser, a self critic, um, a you know perfectionist. Because if we don't do what our caregivers tell us to do, we are in danger of not being cared for and not being loved. So we learn like the four or five year old self, and the four or five year old, six seven year old self is running the show when we are at midlife. But I'm curious for you personally before we actually get into the method and also with your clients. Is there resistance where the self-critic is like, wait a minute, no, 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 I'm not going anywhere. The people pleaser, it's like, hey, hey, I need to stay alive because these are real energies within ourselves. Do you find that there's resistance for yourself when you went through this process and also for your clients? Well, for me, because, you know, I had that frequency that came through me like, you know, a freight train. <laughs> I did not have the resistance. I didn't have a choice. It just happened. So, but what I came to realize, you know, I had been asking, what is my sole purpose? So my sole purpose or my sole mission is to help people go through this more gracefully. So, um, you know, you don't want to call in that kind of energy because it's, it's very, some people have a psychotic break when that happens because it's like they don't know who they are anymore. Luckily, I integrated it well because of this, um, you know, workshop that I did, which I, I do that work as well now too. But yes, every people have resistance, and that's natural because the ego or that programming, you know, and and the the name of the programming, if you put it all together, we've called it the ego, the self-identity, and it is programmed for self-defense to protect itself. And, and there is resistance in the beginning. So most of the resistance comes in making the commitment to, to do the work, to do the change. And what I do to help um, make that resistance um, to overcome the resistance, let's say it that way, is to tell the ego, you know, we're not going to kill you. We're not going to eliminate you. We're going to upgrade you. You have done such a good job <laughs> of um, keeping me the same <laughs> over all these years and creating you know, the same thing over and over again. You're, you're great at your job. So I don't want to take that away from you. I want to give you an upgrade. And so your new identity is that, that you're, I'm going to ask you to keep is going to be much more expanded. And it's going to be, you know, a divine self. So we're going to go from only human to divine human. And usually, you know, if we can, um, if, if, the, if the person is willing to realize that the ego is putting up this resistance, it's coming from the mental realm. See, the, the, the ego is from the mental body. It's from the programming. It's from thoughts. Okay. And so the ego has created what we've all come to call the, the um, comfort zone. But it's which not, is, which is actually very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Right. And, and that's what but... I call it the uncomfortable comfort yeah. zone. Because it's comfortable for the ego, which is in the mental realm, but it's not comfortable for the heart and for our emotions. It's not comfortable for the soul. It's very limiting for the soul. So, you know, at some point, 
you've got to like have the courage. So courage means, you know, that's a French word that means heart. You've got to listen to your heart and your soul and make the commitment to make the change. And then the ego has to line up with that because mm -hmm. the, the mind has to say, okay, you know, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make it work. I'm going to let it work. I'm going to allow it to work. <laughs> and I will, and, and then the mind has to get busy figuring out how it's going to make that because, you know, the resistance will come in the form of, um, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I don't have, I don't know how, you know, my husband's going to react to this. I don't know this. I don't know that. See, it's, I don't know. All mental. <laughs> right. So you have to, I mean, it's really about making the mind, the servant, not the master, like telling exactly. the mind, like, okay, exactly. don't worry. And I love that you're giving you an upgrade. And I love this whole idea of, you know, reality crafting 5.0. So you're going from a 3D reality where you think that all you have is your day-to-day -day existence to a 5D reality where you can really tap into the quantum realm and really start to attract what is true, what you want, but you're, what you want is really coming from this soul alignment of who you are on a deeper level. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Super, super powerful. So let's talk a little bit about, we talked about the emotional mental detox. And so that really is letting go of this old program. And I love the metaphor that you're using. It is, it's like a computer program. And what happens is, and we can you know, bring neuroscience into it. Neurons that um, fire together, wire together. So you have all of this old programming and like, a, you know, for those of us who grew up with records, right? There's grooves on a record that are playing the same tune and you've got to put a new CD, a new record in there to play a new, a new tune. It sounds like, I love that it happens so, so fast. You do that emotional mental detail and then, so how does the, the personal growth and multidimensional spiritual transformation follow once you do that mental, emotional detox, how do you get to this place where you start to really grow um, spiritually and personally? Right. Well, so, so when you're clearing out the old stuff, um, you know, it's all about energy. It's all about frequency. So every thought, every emotion, everything that's in form has a very specific um, frequency signature. And so what I'm doing in the emotional mental detox and well, and everything I do is working at the level of frequency. So when you clear out that old programming and all of the emotions that are attached to the memories that that program created, you know, that are, um, they're all slower, lower frequencies, right? So when you put it together with a higher frequency, and I use infinite love, it neutralizes the, the old frequencies. So uh, you have two different frequencies and the law of harmony says that they they must harmonize so you and people experience this all the time like you might be in a really good mood and somebody comes along and they tell you this story about what just happened to them and you're listening and you're sympathizing and and whatever and you walk away and you don't feel as good as <laughs> you know, as yeah, or you, you did, just listen to the you know, news, you know, you yeah, turn the they, news on and you were like, I felt good a minute ago. And then all of a sudden I watched the news and it's interesting is we get addicted to right. that lower vibration to that frequency. Yes. You can get it. You know? So, yeah. So the other pe person will feel better, you know, or if you're watching TV, you're giving them, you know, energy, but you've been brought down. But what we do um, in the reality crafting 5.0 is we're able to hold the frequency of infinite love steady. And then all the lower frequencies have to speed up to meet it. And then when it meets it, it's not what it was before because infinite love is zero point. It clears it, it you know, if you had anger, it's infinite love. If you had guilt, it's infinite love. If you had doubt, it's infinite love. 
you know, so what it doesn't exist anymore. So now you have a field of infinite love. And it's also the creative energy. So it's the creative energy of the universe that has no form. So you bring it to no form, and then you give it a command, an intentional command, a conscious, you're consciously manifesting into this field of infinite love, of zero point energy. And then that get, that's the instruction codes for um, the energy then to take shape and form. So when you've gone through the emotional mental detox and you've cleared everything out, now you don't have any of that resistance because mm -hmm. that was what was getting in the way of creating what we want. Right. So also, it just keeps sinking back down to that known mental, emotional vibration. And now that you, you clear that and then you're helping people to stay, it's like they're, they're swimming in a little dirty pool. Like here, here in Vermont, we have, you know, uh, cyanobacteria, right? You're, you're in these algae blooms and all of a sudden you're going to a nice clear pond or a lake or river where anything is possible in terms of creating the flow that you want. Right, right. And so what this really does is it, it increases your vibrational signature, you know, your baseline, it takes it up a couple of octaves. So now your frequency is higher. You're attracting more opportunities, more people who are at this higher vibration. The people who um, are close to you are going to you know, you're going to hold this higher frequency, they're going to rise up to meet you. And if they can't, or they won't, they're just going to fall away because like attracts like they won't be in your, your frequency bandwidth. They just, right. and, and it just falls away gracefully. So now, so what happened with me after this all happened, and I'm still for another year, I was in the corporate world. I was, um, I was like experimenting and it was like, I wonder if I can do this. And so I would do things like, um, oh, well, I was a, a creative director. You know, we were creating programs and, and things like that. And so I had a whole team. And so I would say, okay, let us all, you know, consciously create how we want this project to go. And so I'd get them all to, you know, say, and I'd say, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel when you're working on this project? How do you want to feel when you're interacting with the rest of the team? How do you want to feel when you're working with the vendors? And how do you want to feel when you're working with the clients? And when we're all done, how do we want to feel about this project? We're going to sit back and, you know, and so I, they were like, had never done anything like this before. <laughs> But they, they got into it really easily. And so, and it would work. And so, you know, of course, everyone wanted to be on my team after that. But um, so the other thing that happened, it, and this was, it just happened naturally, is people would, I just had this one lady say to me, how is it that you know how to leave a room or when to leave a room? And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, she says, well, we're here in this meeting. Every, everything is harmonious. We're being productive. Everything is fine. You get up, you know, I excuse myself to go to the ladies room or whatever. And it's like, all hell breaks loose and people are arguing and fighting and you don't walk back in until it's all over. How do you know when that's going to happen? And I was like, I don't know that's going to happen but I can tell you what the dynamics are. It's like in my frequency, anger, ego, all of that stuff, it's not in my frequency. So I don't have to be party to other people's stuff, you know? Plus, you know, my frequency, you know, is high. So people match it. And then when I finally did um, leave that job as an employee, I, um, they kept me on as an independent contractor. So I had moved to Sedona 
and I get this call and they want, and the client is asking for me to come back for the month of June in Detroit <laughs> and sit in the meetings. And I'm like, yes. you know, and they're, they're willing to pay me $10,000, which I had asked for. That was a manifestation because I wanted to take my kids to Europe. So I said, I want a job that costs 10 or that gives me $10,000. So, so they call and I said, well, what do, what do they want me to do? Do they want me to, you know, do they need me to revise some training, build, you know, some new, no, they just want you to sit in the meetings. And I'm like, what is going on? So I asked my team and this is, they recognize that in your, in your energy, people are more creative, they're more productive, they're more harmonious, and they just want you to be there. And this is the universe paying you for just being you. <laughs> and what I love about you too, Susanna, is that you're ordinary and extraordinary. Do you know what I mean? And I look at you going, you're just a really high vibe, attractive, beautiful midlife lady. You never would be, you know, you're not like Joan of Arc. It wasn't like, you know, you're not Mary and God came down and said, yeah, you're going to, you know, you're carrying Jesus. You're, it, But that's the cool thing that each and every single one of us can really connect with the divine within. Right. And I love that you are showing people how to do that. So I want to talk um, about two more things before we um, we wrap up. And again, letting you know, go to SusannaKennedy.com, grab that meditation. I know I'm going to go and join that as well, because it sounds extraordinary. Um, how does this impact intuition? When intuition, you, you do this process? Yeah. Well, um, mostly you, you get that when you do the emotional mental detox, because the first session is clearing the dominance of the mind that has been limiting the, um, the feminine intuition, creativity, flow. I mean, that has to do with abundance. That has to do with everything, you know, the end. So you clear that. And then when you do the fe female detox, it clears the feminine side of us from all of the trauma of suppression and repression you know, and so then she's able to get strong. And then, um, yeah, so it just kind of happens naturally is that the intuition will, will pop up, and you won't have that mental part of you throwing so much doubt and shade on it, you know, it's like, it comes through. And, um, you know, you can ask for guidance, um, one of the things I do with people is to set this, and this is the reality crafting part. So you, um, and th this is something I do in private sessions or my VIP groups, but um, so you set your intention, you know what you want to create. So we'll take one aspect of the life that you want to upgrade and we uh, create it, you know, from the feeling, and then we discreate all the resistance to it. And we take that resistance energy that we've turned into infinite love, and that becomes the fuel, the energy to for the um, creation. And then we anchor it in. And then it's the creation is in your field. So you can connect with it. So you're still going to have a sense of, you know, we have this sense of time that things are sequential. So every morning you could ask the creation, you know, what do I need to do to stay aligned with this creation today? And actually that's what I used because after this, um, quantum awakening, you know, I could sense what my life was going to be, but it was so different from what it was. And I had no idea how I was going to get from here to there. And, it, and not having, you know, not knowing, <laughs> it was overwhelming, and it was paralyzing. It's like, I don't know what to do. So I finally, you know, the guidance come in, we'll just ask for enough guidance and enough energy to do what you need to do today to stay aligned with that. And so it's like 
I kind of closed down the whole vision. It was still there, but it was like, I focused on what can I do to d- today to stay in alignment with that? And right. so we that have to release that how, because that can get so over, the how can get so overwhelming. If you get this vision for right. the, the life you have now versus where you were at 20 years ago. I know when I look at where I was at six years ago, when I have now, I kind of had this inkling. I was watching um, Eat, Pray, Love. And I was sort of looking at that last scene. I'm like, I want that. I want that a man like that and a place like that and feeling in love and that energy again. And I have it in spades now, but I didn't know like, how are you going to get there? Right. It's so, um, we have to let go of that. How, because then I, you know, I guess you're bringing in that old mind that's turning and yearning and trying to figure everything out. And that really crowds out, uh, universe from doing its thing. Right. And, and that's, you know, a way that you can use your intuition is to connect with that creation, you know, and, and, you know, you can visualize it as the future you, So it's like, there's the future me. That's my new guide. (laughs) Okay, what do I do today to be you? (laughs) And and you get it. And some days it was some task to do or call this person. Sometimes it was, you know, you just need to chill out and go relax, take a bath. You know, don't do anything. We got this. (laughs) How hard is that sometimes, right? When that, I know for me, I really had to slay my workaholic, my perfectionist and my self-critic. I actually got breast cancer 465 days ago. And that was the universe's way of saying, you know, that's what really transformed me of doing that. But that like do nothing, which I get a lot these days to just sort of just chill right now is a time for you to like kind of cement your healing and chill. I'm done with treatment, but that's really hard. Don't you find with some of your clients that could, when or with yourself, when the voice says, just go play today. Well, I you've, mean, you've already cleared out that voice. Yeah. The, 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 the critic you've, yeah. the critic is not there anymore. So you don't, you don't get that. So it does get easier. And then, you know, you get validation. Like I would, you know, they'd say, you know, take this week and just relax and go be in nature and don't do anything, you know, and I would follow that. And, you know, I'd have clients, you know, calling in, you know, interviews being asked for, I mean, just like it's happening and I'm not doing anything except, you know, being in nature and and loving myself. (laughs) Yeah. Less is more. So one last question is, so if midlife woman is listening, what's your one kernel of advice to help her to really start to deep six, the old program and the old mindset and the old emotions and really start to manifest a beautiful midlife. What would be your kind of parting words of advice besides getting your, uh, your uh, meditation? (laughs) Yeah. Um, well, I would say that midlife is the time for this. This is the perfect time for you to recreate your reality and nothing is lost. So everything, all of your skills, all of your talents, all of your wisdom, you know, it's all important. You know, you didn't waste anything. It's all something that you can use and take the best parts of all of it that, that bring you joy and put that together for, for your new reality. So, you know, this is, this is the right time for this. And, and the universe um, supports this, especially at this time. And that frequency, that kundalini energy, this is when it rises. And, you know, we're, you know, midlife and uh, menopause and all of that. That's that fire (laughs) is, is sent to help us to, to support us in this change. Yeah. Beautiful. So no regrets. Everything's working for your highest good. Take everything that you have, all of the skills and abilities. And it really is that Kundalini rising. There's this Uranus opposition to the sun. And then we go through that Chiron healing around 50. So the 42 is kind of around when we have that opposition to Uranus. So there, it, it's a time of, of change, but it's a really good time of change. So thank you. Your wisdom has just been so inspirational. I want to let you 
all listening know that you can again go to SusannaKennedy.com. You can get that free meditation uh, and really start this emotional mental detox. If you want to get in touch with me, go to the midlifewhisper.com. That's the midlifewhisper.com. I would love to support you on your journey. And if you've enjoyed the show, please leave me a review. I'd love to know what you think about the show. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you, Susanna, for being here. It truly has been an honor and a joy to hear your story and to learn how we can really shift our vibe at midlife. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It was really a joy to be with you. Midlife can be challenging. You may be sandwiched between growing kids and aging parents, dealing with menopause or a health issue, and trying to find work-life balance. Or maybe your life looks good on the outside, but inside you're feeling stuck and wondering how to get your confidence, energy, and joy back. Hi, I'm Dr. Ellen, the Midlife Whisperer, and I hear you and I've got you. Think of me as the one-stop shop for all your midlife needs. I'm a psychologist, registered dietitian, nutritionist, board-certified health and wellness coach, and mindful self-compassion teacher. I'm also an author and podcast host with over 30 years of experience empowering midlife women. I provide inspiration and wisdom to help you transform your health, your mindset, your relationships, and your life so you can rock midlife. 